wasn't that nice. Hello, and welcome to I Remember Television Again. The 1950s, USA, a period marked by a booming economy, the shadow of the Cold War, and the golden age of television. TV's popularity continued to rise throughout the decade, bringing brave new worlds for audiences to explore, just from their living room couches. One such world was introduced on February 27, 1954. Rocky Jones, Space Ranger, starring Richard Crane, gave American audience a ride through the uncharted cosmos aboard the Orbit Jet, an entire decade before Star Trek's takeoff. Rocky Jones fearlessly pursues the unknown. Alongside his talented crew, Space Rangers Vina Ray, Winky, and 10-year-old Bobby, backed up by resident brainiac Professor Newton and humble Secretary of Space, Drake. Their mission? To protect the united worlds of the solar system. In tonight's adventure with Rocky Jones, we discover Vina and much of the other Rangers are in imminent danger on space station OW9. And it's up to Rocky to reach them before it's too late. So let's travel through space with Rocky Jones as I remember television again. Transport TR-14. Thanks for the buggy ride. Out. Secretary Drake, you've landed your spaceship here on our planet against my orders. Cleolanta, please try to understand the united worlds of the solar system. Each world does its share for the benefit of all. You can help us, Cleolanta, and we can help you. Cleolanta needs no help from any man. Our planet Ophetius is strong. It needs no help from your planet. You're depriving your people of great benefits, Cleolanta. Rocky Jones, you are presumptuous. Everything that my people need is right here on Ophetius. I grant you one hour to leave Ophetius. If you don't, you and your spaceship will be destroyed. Only 59 minutes remain. Last bond. Train the guns on their spaceship. 59 minutes. Come along, Rocky. Winky. It's useless. No, we're wasting our precious minutes. <laughs> A stubborn woman if I ever saw one. Winky, you can't argue with self-sufficient people like that. Well, not me. I'm, I'm a friendly guy. I like my neighbors. You know, how about a game of cards? Or may I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> Orbit jet to space station OW9. 
Won't Rocky be surprised? Station OW9 to orbit jet. Andrews to Rocky Jones. Come in, Rocky. OW9 to orbit jet. Come in, Rocky Jones. Well, what's the matter with Andrews? Has he got a mouthful of crackers or something? Rocky Jones to OW9. Come in, OW9. Andrews to Rocky Jones. Come in. <laughs> Goodness gracious, we befuddled Rocky. <laughs> That's Professor Newton and Vina and Bobby. That's right, Winky. We're all here. Say, what are you doing on Space Station OW9? We're here to greet old friends, Rocky. Tunda, Bavaro, and Torbeck. What, have they managed to build a spaceship of their own? No, Winky. The Gypsy Moons, Posita, and Nagato are entering our solar system. At 0600 today, they will be very close to this space station. Not close enough to wave, but close enough to talk. Professor Newton, where will the space station be in relation to the Gypsy Moons? Directly between them, Rocky. Andrews. Yes, Rocky, great news, isn't it? Stand by. I'll check back as soon as possible. Out. Winky, stay at the controls. Correct direction. Head for space station OW9. Roger. What is it, Rocky? Something Professor Newton overlooked. The atmosphere chain which links the two moons. Now, assume this is the space station. And these are the gypsy moons. Posita and Nagato approaching from that direction. Now, as the moons pass, the atmosphere chain will envelop the space station, and it was built only to stand in space. A sudden voice of atmosphere could destroy it. Where are we in relation to them? This is our position here. Now, I don't know whether we can reach space station OW9 in time to evacuate it. I can't understand Rocky not being excited about the gypsy moons. Maybe Mr. Secretary put the pressure on him. Perhaps he didn't like our blasting off from Earth without orders. Yes, that must be it, Vina. Well, I can't think of any other reason. Orbit jet to space station OW9. Rocky Jones to Andrews. Come in, Andrews. Yes, Rocky. Give me your refueling schedule. When's the next spaceship due? Nothing scheduled, Rocky. Since transport TR-14 left, we're all clear. I'll sign off. Call back to TR-14. Bring it back. What is it, Rocky? What's the matter? I have to clear for Andrew's call. Just remind Professor Newton of the atmosphere chain. And hurry, Andrews. Make the call. Bring back the TR-14. Out. The atmosphere chain, Professor? The atmosphere chain. Now, what can Rocky have made? Of course, of course. Oh, how stupid of me. What is it, Professor? Yes, what? Quick, Andrews. Make your call as Rocky said. Space Station, OW9 to transport TR-14. Come in, TR-14. Come in. Oh, Vina. I've made a terrible blunder. I've, I've led you and Bobby into grave peril. Why, the, the OW9 is going to be destroyed. What do you mean, Professor? An object built to withstand the elements of space cannot survive in an atmosphere. The atmosphere chain. That's right. And Rocky wants the TR-14 to evacuate us. Space station OW-9 to transport TR-14. Urgent. Repeat. Urgent. Come in. I can't get an answer. Shall I call Rocky back? He knows what's happening. He'll do everything possible. Keep trying the TR-14. OW-9 to TR-14, come in. Mayday, repeat, Mayday. Space Station, OW-9 to transport TR-14. Mayday, repeat, Mayday. We'll have to try to get there, Winky. I'm bleeding her now, Rocky, all the thrust she's got. Space Station, OW-9 to transport TR-14. Can you hear me? Turn back, turn back. Orbit jet to Space Station, OW-9. Rocky Jones to Andrews. Yes, Rocky. 
It's no use, Andrews. The TR-14 is beyond reach. Has Professor Newton rechecked his figures? Yes, Rocky, and they're absolute. The gypsy moons will pass the space station at 0600 today. Don't worry. We'll get you off before then. Tell Andrews I'll call back every hour on the hour. Rocky, please try to understand my blunder. It was just that I thought of nothing else but seeing our friends on the gypsy moons. I understand, Professor. Until the next hour, out. Out, Rocky. Have you a plan, Rocky? Something we can do? Reaching the space station before 0600 looks impossible. We've been in on deals like this before. A, a possible crash of moons or a stray meteor clobbering a planet. And we've exploded the small meteors with atomic missiles and blasted the big ones so they'd spin out of the danger orbit. Those were just hunks of ore with no life on them. There are people on these moons. These inhabitants of the gypsy moons, Rocky, do they know their position? Do they have any idea what's going to happen? No, Mr. Secretary. Without a fixed position in space, they're unable to make astronomy an exact science. Quotanda! Quotanda! What is the matter with our son? I don't understand this, Uvaro. He has been crying for a long time. He seems to be afraid. Something has frightened him. I wonder what it is, Uvaro. Don't worry, Quotanda. Our little prince is just strengthening his voice. So someday he may rule his people. I wonder if Rocky Jones will find our gypsy moons again. So he may see our little son. We're picking up the gypsy moons on our radar backs. Right, Andrews. We're also starting to pick them up. But we're still too far away to catch the image of your space station. I'll call back in an hour. I'll do that behind. Oh, Rocky. We can now make pickup on visiograph, Andrews. excitement for a rocket. There's nothing built quite as sturdy as a space station. Against the perils of space, yes, Winky. But she wasn't built to withstand an atmosphere. She'll be picked up and carried off like a barn door in a hurricane. Well, it's a long shot, Winky. But we'll try to get there in time to evacuate. Yes, sir. minutes, Rocky. We've got just seconds left, Winky. Let's make them count. If I can 
only ram into the landing button. And push the space station out of the atmosphere chain. Yes, only in this weather we're going to have our hands full. Hat thrust, Ricky. Yes, sir. Orbit jet to space station order B9. Andrews, can you come in? Space station order B9, come in. OW9. Throw on your magnetic lock. We're trying for the landing berth. Throw on your magnetic lock. Winky, when we get into the berth, full power. Standing by, sir. Magnetic lock on, Rocky. Right, Andrews. disturbance in the atmospheric chain. Negato recorded it too, but we have no idea what it is. How is our son, Quotanda? Oh, let's see. Uh, Rocky Jones would say, the sleep of the happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you saw what happened, Mr. Secretary. This looks like the room of a new cadet. <laughs> Such a cadet would never make the Space Rangers, I assure you. I'll dispatch a workship for a third check. It looks like Space Station OW9 will be as good as new. Yes, sir, I'm sure of it. Goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, sir. Now, Vina and I have started a graph of the Gypsy Moon's course. We must realize that gypsy moons can present very grave problems. Other space stations may be trapped in the atmosphere chain. Or with even far greater loss of life, one of the moons may crash against another, or even a planet. Can you get an exact course, Professor Newton? Are they traveling in a fixed orbit? Yes, Rocky, but not in the way our planets travel in the solar system. Well, what do you mean, Professor? Well, you see, when... The major planets in our system travel around the sun. And the gypsy moons travel around each other. Exactly, Rocky. And because of this, they can be far more dangerous. I see what you mean, Professor Newton. And while the gypsy moons themselves aren't large, the orbit they describe is. Like children of a playground. What's that mean? Here, let me show you. Bobby. The way they move through space is something like two children on a playground. Bobby is Posita, and I'm the other moon, Nagato. Our arms and hands are the atmosphere chain. They move through space, spinning around each other. But if I spin myself, I don't cover half as much area. Sure, I get it. Now, this is my great concern, Rocky. Magnify this by... Tens of thousands of miles, and you see, you see what tremendous danger we're confronted with. For example, say there's a planet or a moon right over there. Now, Bobby, go ahead again. Oh, Mr. Secretary, I'm sorry. What's going on? The illustration of an astronomical phenomenon, Mr. Secretary. Yeah, it, uh... 
It seems that you are a planet, Mr. Secretary, and Vina is Posita, and Bobby's Nagato. No, no, no. Bobby is Posita, and Vina is Nagato. Now, you, you could really either be a planet or a moon, but as it happens, you're a planet. So, you see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm ready with the corrected navigation chart, Rocky. Well, please go ahead, Vina. This is our course, Rocky. This is Posita's position, and this is Nagato's. With the course we're on, we can contact Posita about here. Correct heading 4.37, Winky. 37, sir. Oh, Vina, how's Professor Newton coming with the charting of the future of the Gypsy Moons? He's through the 10th of next month, Rocky. It's clear sailing for him so far. Oh, so far, so good. Right, Wink? I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And you're positive, Professor. Perhaps there's some little mistake. Yeah. Perhaps there is, Bobby. Yes, I, I'll go back and recheck my figures. How far have you gone, Professor Newton? Oh, uh, I'm just rechecking, Vina, just to make sure, you know. Orbit jet to Posita headquarters. Rocky Jones to Bavaro. Come in, Bavaro. Come in, Bavaro. Bavaro, come some way from Rocky Bones. Quatanda, we were going to speak the language so well. It is Squawky John. No, no, Rocky Boy. Come down, Bubba. Talk to him. Orbit Jet to Rocky Jones. That's right. We've tried Quadova to vex one language. And what about Vina and Professor Newton and, and Bobby and Vinky? This is Vinky. And Winky, she's got me doing it. Bobby and the professor are with us, and so is Vina. Bavaro. Yes, Rocky. We're in the ellipse of your moon. Landing time, 0214. Hurry in, Rocky. This is so, so clandinto. Clandinto, so, so wonderful, I mean, Rocky. how happy Vina is. I just couldn't bring myself to tell her. Can there be a mistake, Professor? Is the collision between Ophetius and Posita inevitable? I've double-checked my equations, Rocky. There's not the slightest margin for error. Ophetius, Cleolantis planet, which didn't need any help from anyone. She'll need plenty now. A fleet of spaceships for evacuation. Bavaro. To him, his moon is a place of beauty. It's whole world. Well, we'd better go. He has to be told. Oh, Kotanda, he's beautiful. Beautiful? What is that you say? His mother is beautiful. My son is strong. <laughs> All right, then. He's beautiful and strong. Good. The next route out for Sita, he will be beautiful and strong. <laughs> Wait here. I wish to surprise Rocky with my son. <laughs> Rocky Jones! Hello, Bobar. Welcome to Posita, Poppy! Why was I not lucky enough to have a son who would grow up to be a fine boy like Bobby? Welcome to Posita, Bobby. Welcome. 
Then he could be a brave man like Rocky Jones. Oh, Bavaro, I want you to meet Secretary Drake. Bavaro? Oh, my son could be a great leader, like Secretary Drake. I heard so much about you, Mr. Secretary. Welcome to Pazita. Come right in. Thank you. Well, my son could have a brilliant mind, like Professor Newton here. Welcome, Professor. Bavaro, you honor me. <laughs> Come right in, Professor. Hi, Bavaro. Winky! Or like Winky, my son would... Uh, 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 would have a huge heart and a wonderful twinkle in his eye. <laughs> Gentlemen, I was afraid we'll never meet again, Rocky. My moon travels a lot, Mr. Secretary. Yes. Professor Newton has been charting your course. Yes? The way the gypsy moons, Posita and Negato, travel through space, it's an astronomical phenomenon. Phen <laughs> what is phenomenon? Something unusual, Bavaro. You see, the atmosphere which joins the two moons serves as a chain. One moon swings the other, then the other, and so on. Strange that we don't get uh, dizzy, huh? <laughs> Bavaro, please, listen carefully. On the 19th of next month, your moon, Posita, will, will crash head-on into a fecius. Both will be destroyed. What? What do you say? Posita is going to be destroyed? Yes, Bavaro. No. No, it will not happen. Never! I will not let it happen! Never! I'm sorry, Bavaro, but it can't be prevented. What are you saying to me? Why did you come back? Why did you come back? Bavaro, what is the matter? This is a sum Cortanda has given me. And I shall give him Posita to rule and nothing, nothing is going to stop it. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Rocky Jones adventures were brought to life with state-of-the-art special effects. Although it's hard to imagine back in the mid-50s, the show was the early essence of space-age style. The sleek orbit jet, a design referencing a World War II V-2 rocket, epitomizes mid-century modern industrial styling. Let's get back to Crash of the Moons, Chapter 2. Let's see what happens next. Jones, Space Ranger, Space Ranger, Space Ranger, starring Richard Crane in The Crash of Moons, Chapter 2. When we last saw Rocky Jones, he had flown his spaceship, the Orbit Jet, to the moon Posita. He had gone to warn Bovaro, the ruler, that his moon was in danger of being destroyed by a collision with the planet Ophetius. This is Posita's present position. This is Nagato. Now, the tremendous gravitational pull of the sun begins about here. And the two moons begin to increase their arc so that on the 19th... And the planet in which we are going to crash, 
What was its name again? Officious. Knowledge. Is this your word for learning something? Yes, Pavarov. I wish I would know this word. I wish I would know this knowledge. Then there would be one more month of peace and happiness on Posita. Now there's nothing left but waiting. Waiting for the end. No, Pavarov. It must be a month of great activity. Your people and their possessions must be evacuated from Posita. There's still time. Rocky, you speak of it like moving from one house into the other. Would you be so calm if it were your earth that is about to be destroyed? The disaster couldn't be prevented, yes. Of course, Rocky, you're right. Now, now, little thing, don't cry. You know, Bina, in some strange way, our baby knew about Pusita's tragedy before Rocky told it. I have had great pride in Posita. More than anything, I'm distressed that my son shall lose his heritage. How the people of Ophetius must hate us. Their moon stands still in all innocence while we rush forward to destroy it. Have they started the evacuation, Rocky? They don't know what's going to happen. Ophetius is ruled by an arrogant woman named Cleolanta. She won't allow her people any information about life on other moons and planets. Even the possession of an astrophone set is punishable by death. We tried to reason with Cleolanta, but she wouldn't listen to us. She even threatened to kill us if we returned. But she must know. She must be warned. She will be. Mr. Secretary, may I suggest you go with Bavaro to Nagato and meet with Torvac, the ruler? We'll need his help in the evacuation. Professor Newton, you and Bean and Bobby will do what you can here on Posita while Winky and I are gone. There must not be any panic among the people. Yes, Rocky. Mr. Secretary, we'll leave for Ophetius immediately. Hey, Rocky, couldn't we rig up a space anchor for Vizita and call the whole thing off? <laughs> we only could, Bobby. That'd be a great solution. Uh special audience with Cleolanta. My uh, suzerain says she has great plans in store for me. Well, aren't you proud of me? We used to have plans too, Atlasan. We were going to leave Ephesius and see how other people lived. To me, Ephesius comes first. You're talking as foolishly as a child, Trinka. Yes, Atlasan. Cut rockets, Winky. We'll stand off and try to get a message through. All right, I see. We'll be lucky if we can get through to Ophetius. Cleolanta always jams and garbles our messages. You're right, Winky. Now, I know we can't get through to Cleolanta, but we'll try for the underground. You see, there's an underground faction there in favor of joining the United Worlds. If they have a secret astrophone set, they can relay my message to Cleolanta. This is Rocky Jones in the Space Ranger ship Orbit Jet to Ophetius. Rocky Jones. Alert, Ophetius. Alert. Learn this. The moons Posita and Negato are traveling in our solar system. On the 19th, the moon Posita will collide with your planet, Ophetius. Cleolanta must be told at once. 
An evacuation must be planned. The United Worlds offer all possible assistance. This is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet. Stand by. I'll repeat the message. And if we don't get through, it's a landing under fire, huh? Right, Winky. Rocky Jones to Ophetius. Trinka, will you forgive me? As you know, I, I'm ambitious. And I love Ophetius. I also love you, Trinka. Which is the greater love I... I don't know. Atlas Sam. The United Worlds offer all possible assistance. I'll repeat the message. United World? Trinka. Atlas Sam, please. Please forgive me, but you must listen to what the voice is saying. This is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet. Clear to Ophetius. Think we got through, Rocky? I doubt it, Winky. If Cleolanta heard our message, there'd be some reply. A warning to stay clear because she didn't believe us. Or demand that we prove our information. So? Rockets on, Winky. We'll attempt a landing. Aye, aye, sir. underground conspiracy against us. I'm not in any conspiracy against Ophetius, but you must listen to me. You will answer my questions, and that is all. Who else is in the conspiracy? No one. I only wanted to hear how other people lived and what they were like. And I love Ophetius as much as you. You answer my suzerain's questions and not one more word. That's very good, Atlas Sands. Knowing the punishment, it wasn't easy to report your wife's betrayal. Thank you, Cleolata. Cleolata, my suzerain. Yes? There is a spaceship descending on Ophetius. It's Rocky Jones. Please listen to him. Silence, Trinka. My suzerain does not need the advice of a traitor. Prepare to fire. Fire control's ready. No, Atlas Land. Fire. <laughs> That's heavy stuff they're throwing, Rocky. The next one will do it. Ready, Atlas Land. Ready and... Please, Atlas Sand, don't start to fire again or I shall have to kill you. Fire, Atlas Sand! Yes, my suzerain. Then this will stop you. Don't repeat the order, Cleolanda. Have you ever had a funny feeling you're about to get slugged? No matter what happens, Winky, don't fire. Alert the guard. Kill those two men. I don't want them inside the city spreading lies to my people about the United World. I don't see any welcome, Matt. 
there isn't even a doorbell. At least when we were here with Secretary Drake, they let us in. Hello. It's important that we see Cleolanda. Who is it that wishes to see Cleolanda? Skipper. All right, tickets to Cleolanda. Move! Put two, three, four. Put two. Put two, three, four. All right, Winky. Atlas Sand. Cleolanda, I don't, I, I don't know what happened. I was going down the... Cleolanda, you're going to sit down and listen to every word I have to say. Sure, it's for your own good. Happy for days, laughing and not a single whimper. Yes, Mr. Secretary. Yes, I'll, I'll tell her at once. Oh, and my very best regards to Bavaro and to Torbac. Out. Where? The meeting on Negato has been successfully concluded. Torvac will gladly welcome the unfortunate people of Posita to his move. Oh, but uh, when will Bovaro return? I, I have concern for our son. Well, not for several days. They are making plans for temporary housing on Negato so we can start the evacuation. No, Cleola. Not a day must be wasted, not even a single hour. Winky and I will return to Posita immediately to help with their evacuation. But what about officials? A committee will be dispatched from the United Worlds. They'll help you with your evacuation to a new world, which will be mutually agreed upon. They will tell me where to take my people? No, Cleolanda. They'll only advise. Come on, Winky. Please, grant me one moment. Let me speak alone with my lieutenants, Atlas San and Lars Vaughn. All right, Cleolanda. Cleolanda. They must be silenced. If word of the crash of moons leaked out, there'd be panic here on Ophetius. The gas will keep them inactive until I've decided what to do. What is it? Quick, Winky, cover your face. The vent up there. Come with me, Atlas Sand. We will make our own plan. careful check of this chart drawn by Rocky Jones. Beyond a doubt, Posita will collide with Ophetius on the 19th. I won't allow it. Should we not ask the United Worlds for help to speed up our evacuation? Never. Look, Leolanda, if we could only make sure that Posita would be evacuated by this time. Why worry about Posita? I'm thinking of Ophetius, Leolanda. You see, we could fire Teutonic missiles into Posita which might disintegrate it entirely. If not, even the slightest deviation from orbit there would make it miss Ophetius by, by thousands of miles. Of course. To be safe, Atlas San, we should explode Posita, here. But if we exploded it there, Posita wouldn't have a chance to evacuate all its people. This vagrant moon Posita aims to destroy us. Instead, we will destroy it. 
We act only for self-preservation. Yes, my suzerain. a bad dream. I want to hear you laugh and say, wake up, forget your dream. But Trinka, I did only what I thought was right for Ophetius. Did you kill Rocky Jones? No. No, he's only asleep. Atlas Ann, did he get a chance to speak? Yes, Trinka. And now I'll be a great man in the history of Ophetius, the savior of our planet. How? I command Cleolana's spaceship. We leave soon to intercept this menacing moon. It will be my honor to fire Tritanic missiles into Posita, which will save Ophetius. I'll be rewarded, Trinka. And all I'll ask for is a full pardon and liberty for you. But on the astrophone, Rocky Jones said there are people on this moon. Trinka, that can't be helped. Atlas Ann, report to landing base. Goodbye, Trinka. Atlas Ann, wait. Warn those people on Posita. Give them a chance to live. Trinka, I'm only obeying Cleolanda's orders. But think of Rocky Jones. He gambled his life to warn us, to give us a chance to live. We must do the same for others. Atlas Ann, report to landing base. Goodbye, Trinka. Now you'll go back to sleep and know nothing until I return. great deal wiser than I am and, and much braver. You do whatever you think is best, but please be careful. Lasmon is on guard and he thinks you're asleep. There, just a moment. Yeah. Watch that window. If it starts to open, you must appear to be unconscious. Huh? Oh, yeah. Please, come with me. Hurry. Sit down, close to the door where you can't be seen. I 
Time Trinket. You must be Rocky Jones. Yes. Tell me, Trinket. How long have I been asleep? I don't know. I was also put to sleep. They call me a traitor to Ephesians. I had an astrophone set to listen to your voice. My husband is Atlas Anna. Rocky, Cleolanta, and Atlas Anna have left Ophetius. They're going to try to shock Posita out of her orbit. They're going to bombard her with Tritanic missiles. How long have they been gone? Not long. Rocky, if you could only get to your spaceship. Yeah, if. I get to the spaceship. Hey. Spaceship, you better come with us, Trinka. Winky. Prepare for blast off, Winky. Aye, aye, sir. Quick, Trinka, up the ladder. Careful blast off, Trinka. We're on a 20 time for a quick blast off, sir. Full rocket, Swinky. Cleolana's on her way to bombard Pazita. Vina and Bobby and the Professor and the Little Prince and all the others. We'll make it. Sure we will. Hey, Rocky, who is that luscious trail of stardust, anyway? Trinka's a married woman, Winky. Oh. next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.
there seems to be nothing Rocky Jones can't do. Thanks to Richard Crane and his very notable athleticism, it's hard to imagine any other face portraying our beloved Ranger. And Crane definitely knew how to work the camera. Having a career spanning over three decades in film and TV. Now in chapter three of Crash of Moons, we'll conclude our story. Let's watch. Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. In The Crash of Moons, Chapter 3. When we last saw Rocky Jones, he was in his spaceship, the Orbit Jet, on his way to overtake Cleolanta, the ruler of Ophetius, who had set out to ruthlessly bombard the moon Posita. Rocky, if you overtake Cleolanta's spaceship, will you have to destroy it? I don't know. My husband, Atlas San, is on the ship with her. I know, Trinka. But we must stop them from trying to bombard Posita out of its orbit. Well, Cleolana knows that the crash between Opetius and Posita is inevitable. Why doesn't she realize she can't prevent it? Rocky, I'm frightened for those people on Posita. See if you can contact them, Wiggy. Yes, sir. This is the XV-2 orbit jet calling Posita. Acknowledge, please. Orbit jet calling Posita. Respond. Urgent. Urgent. We're still out of contact range, Rock. Nothing wrong with the little prince physically. It's uh, it's something we can't explain. It's his intuition, his sense of danger. Oh, but there are still 14 days until our moon Posita crashes into Ophetius. He must not be allowed to cry all that time. Perhaps when we're evacuated, when we're safe on the Gato, he'll stop. Yes, that's it, Vina. So you see, we must hurry with the evacuation. But you. You stay with your little son, Quotanda. I don't think it's the crash of moons that's bothering him. It's got something to do with Rocky and Winky. Atlas Van, at this glorious moment, you're so quiet. I can't explain, Cleolanta. Sight target. The moon Posita on target. Prepare to fire trotanic missile. Repeat on five pounds. Ready, my suzerain. Rocky Jones to Posita. Come in. Gosh, Rocky, it's you. I was wrong, Vina. It's Rocky. Now, listen carefully, Bobby. You'll have to talk up, Rocky. The little prince is crying so loud that... Bobby! Bobby, come in! First missile. I'm afraid so, we... Look, Winky. An enemy ship. Change course to attack and stop bombardment. Aye, aye, sir. Count two, count one. Fire! Oh, my baby, hurry, Nina. Take him to the underground. 
down, Chad. That is the only chance. Bobby, go help them. Run quick, Bobby. Run. Fire. Target, sir. Fire one. What was that? Your ship is crippled, Cleolana. A perfect target for a missile from the other jet. So stop the bombardment of Poseidon. Rocky Jones. How did he get here, Atlas Ann? Atlas Ann, don't let Cleolanda fire another missile. Your wife, Trinka. You too are a traitor to old Vicious. Atlas Ann, Atlas Ann, answer me. It's your order, Rocky. Another moment is all, Winky. We've got to get to Brazil. Atlas Ann, Atlas Ann. Atlas Ann, Atlas Ann. No more missiles will be fired, Trinker. On the double, Winky. Prepare for landing on Posita. Aye, right. Rocky, what will happen to Atlas Sam? Their ship is crippled in space lock, Trinker. We'll haul it in later after giving help on Posita. Full rocket power, Winky. All rockets, sir. tried to make it to the underground shelter, Rocky. Trigger, do what you can for them. Oh, Rocky, my baby. Come on, Winky. Bobby, if we could only get some air in here, someone would only find us. We're all right, Vina. Look at the little prince. He knows the danger's over. Vina, Bobby, why are you there? Down here, Rocky. Quickie, move this stuff. Are you all right? How's the little prince? All right. Now let's go. I've never wanted a son to be raised under the rule of Cleolanta. Well, it's a patchwork job, Rocky, but the magnetic pole should have enough power to bring in Atlas and spaceship. Good. Negato to Posita. Secretary Drake to Professor Newton. Come in, Professor. Posita to Negato. Rocky Jones to Mr. Secretary. Great to hear your voice, Rocky. How did Cleolanta receive the news of the crash of moon? Has the evacuation of Ophetius started? This may come as a surprise, Mr. Secretary. But Cleolanta is now in Posita. Well, that is, she's standing off in space, waiting to be brought in. But Rocky, she should be taking care of the people of Ophetius. She tried to take care of Posita and almost succeeded. When will you return, Mr. Secretary? Well, Bavaro and I are leaving now. Temporary housing has been arranged by Torvac. The people of Nagata will be glad to welcome their friends from Posita. The evacuation starts tomorrow morning. Out, Rocky. Out, Mr. Secretary. Ready for magnetic ground control of spaceship, Rocky. Oh, fine, Winky. 
Posita to Ephesian spaceship. Rocky Jones to Atlasan. Atlasan speaking. What is it, Rocky? Secure in your control chair. We'll bring you in for a landing in a spiral spin. Yes, sir. Any time, Wicky. Okay. Every day, the shadow of Posita will become blacker on the surface of Ophetius. You're a traitor beyond words, Hatless Sand. I did not command the crash of the moons, Cleolante. But Ophetius could have been saved. And all the people of Posita would have died. I'm proud of Trinka. Please understand, Cleolanta, that a crash of moons is an unfortunate thing that cannot be explained nor prevented. We can only offer a united efforts so that all the people are saved. But I want Ophetius saved. Seems you're more interested in the land than in your people, Cleolanta. Without a land, there cannot be a race of Ophetians. My people will separate, drift apart to one world and another. My land, too, is being destroyed, Cleolanta. But my people will stay together. A new Ophetius will be founded. Some planet that's rich and fertile and can be developed. Mr. Secretary, please. What is it, Rocky? And Bavaro. Yes, Rocky? We should make plans quickly to evacuate both Ophetius and Posita. But we should speed the plans to evacuate Posita first. If this can be done in time, Cleolanta could have her chance to save Ophetius by destroying Posita after Bavaro's people have left it. Bavaro, could you get your people to Nagato immediately? We can shuttle airships very fast through the atmospheric chain. I feel guilty that my moon is the destroyer. So everything possible will be done. Repair my spaceship at once. Atlasan and I will wait until Posita is evacuated, then resume the bombardment. Oh, no, Cleolanta. Trick and I will be on the spaceship with you in Atlasan. I'll give the order to start the bombardment. Oh, Winky. Sir? You and Vina will control the orbit jet under Secretary Drake's command. Aye, aye, sir. Sir, word will be sent to all available spaceships to stand by to aid in the evacuation of Ephesus in case the bombardment fails. Professor? Yes, Rocky. You'll come with me to see if the bombardment shocks Posita from its orbit. Yes, Rocky. Hey, Rocky, what about me? Oh, yes. Bobby, board the orbit jet. <laughs> Little Prince, what's bothering you this time? <laughs> if you could only talk. The last plane to Nagato is leaving. Such a fine little prince to be raised without the land to rule. Come, Quatanda. I must prepare the flare signal that will tell Rocky the evacuation is complete. Professor, Zeta has just signaled complete evacuation. Watch carefully, Professor. Check to see if we succeed in shocking the moon from its orbit. Ready, Rocky. Start the bombardment. Two missiles direct on target, Professor. Report results, please. The course of procedure is still absolute without deviation, Rocky. Fire again. Again and again. Nothing can stand against Rotanic missiles. We're driving missiles, Professor. 
Professor. What's your rating? A seat that does not show the slightest deviation from course, Rocky. It must not be. A crash of moons is something that was meant to be, Cleolanta. We can't stop it. Ophician spaceship to orbit jet. Rocky Jones to Winky, come in. Ophician spaceship to orbit jet. Mr. Secretary, Rocky Jones is calling in. I'm with you, Rock. What's the report? Bombardment of the evacuated moon, Posita, failed to show results. Collision with Ophicius on the 19th is absolute. Well, I figured, Rocky. Mr. Secretary? I've alerted all the spaceships in the vicinity. The fleet will now go to Ophicius to help in the evacuation. Cleolata will be glad to hear that, Mr. Secretary. A land, a world, where shall I take my people? Please, Cleolanta, give us your cooperation. We'll do everything possible. Now, Rocky... It's a plot of the United World. It's a trick to make the Ophicians a lost race. Atlas, I have no time to lose. There are plans to be made. It's a plot, a trick. Yes, Mr. Secretary. Rocky, you will arrive in Ophicius first. The people must be warned and told to prepare for the evacuation. If there is a panic, everything is lost. Yes, Mr. Secretary. And I have a good partner for the job. If you wish, Rocky, I'll blast down the ship. I know the field. Go ahead, Atlas. Spaceship. Our chance to escape. You've given the orders, Rocky Jones. But now, as suzerain of Ophicius, I demand the right to speak to my people. Alone. All right, Cleo Lover. I must respect your leadership. Atlas Ann. Another chance. Blast off! Take us away from those beaches. Get them out of here! Wreck the ship! your friend. I won't command, but listen to me. You all know what is going to happen. You have a right to be afraid. But we have fine friends who will help us. If you will all behave in an orderly manner, the United Worlds will see that everyone is evacuated by the 19th.
You said I was brave, Atlas Sam, but I, I'm not. I'm frightened. Secretary Drake will get here. We still have five days. Orbit jet to officious. Vina to whoever will answer. And I sure hope it's you, Rocky. <laughs> Rocky Jones to the orbit jet. Come in. We want landing clearance, Rocky. Secretary Drake is following in on the XV-8 as commander of the evacuation fleet. You have your clearance, Vina. But be careful when you land. There's understandable tension here on Ophetius. Out. Out, Rocky. You will each receive a slip of paper. They are numbered with 16, 17, 18, and 19. For the people who draw the 19, I can only say this. Atlan and I will be on the last spaceship to leave, the orbit jet. That will be under the command of Rocky Jones. And none of our friends from the United World will leave, we'll leave until, until everyone, everyone on Ophetia is, is safely on their way, way to a new, new home. home. The XV-5 is ready to be dispatched. Order, Order to XV-5. Blast, Blast off. off. Please, my suzerain, there'll be another officious. No, I remain here. I'm sorry, Cleolata. of my life. Why should this happen? Why? Bovaro to Rocky Jones. Come in. Rocky Jones to Bovaro. Did you see the crash of moons? Yes, Rocky. It happened. But what does it matter, really? Torvald here put it so wisely. It isn't the land. It's the people who make the country. Bovaro, do you really feel that? Do you really believe it isn't the land, but the people who make up a country? Yes, Cleolanta. And please try. You will see. 
Thank you, Bavaro. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Ringing true with heroism, it's always easy to root for Rocky Jones and his Space Rangers. Hopefully in the future, Cleonata will learn to be more trusting and open to assistance, especially from the crew of the Orbit Jet. Thanks to Rocky Jones and the Space Rangers, the solar system is safe for now. Until next time, when we again venture back to the golden days, to the days that remind us of where all this magic began as I remember television again.